A year later, you find yourself on a flight to your first meeting with a big client. You are 26 years old and the year is 2021. The past year has been one of hard lessons for your business and you've often found yourself wondering if you could have made the same, if you would have made the same mistakes if you had learned to run a business from Josh. Regardless, you hope to prove to yourself that you've overcome your lack of experience by landing this big deal. Who is your big client? Alright, and our options are Spark Incorporated, maker of flying cars. Oh yeah! Which we showed some interest in at the beginning of this whole thing. Rudolph Ventures, a shipping company working the newly melted North Pole. Hmm. Pull us into our future there. Uh, Gallon, Gallon, Galen? Gallon Medical, a company specializing in surgical equipment. I'm up for that. I still like marketing Ian as a surgical boss. Um, Galen. Galen. He's named after a Greek medical uh, philosopher. A man in Shanghai who wants to negotiate the import of 10,000 robots. That's not shifty at all. No. Or the United States Air Force. That's quite a 360 turnaround, or 180 turnaround if we try to... Yeah, take it. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit. Uh, uh, Rudolph Ventures. I'm up Shipping for... Shipping company uh, working the newly melted North Pole. Galen Medical, personally. I wouldn't be too upset with Spark Incorporated. Spark Incorporated would also be all right, maker of flying cars. Although, I don't think we have anything that, like... I we really want is high autonomy for that, our, right? Yeah, it's like you do. Do we want to make flying cars more intelligent? It seems like our big breakthrough is Ian. Ian's kind of leaning towards uh, a surgery bot at the moment. Yeah, seems like a good good direction to go. Mm-hmm. All right. Metabots is investing or selling to Galen with Medical. Galen Medical to see what we're gonna do. Skynet wants to be your client. I don't think Skynet gives you a choice. <laughs> you want to read this one? How did you fund your company? Some small companies are run entirely out of pocket, but even small, unforeseen expenses can cause such a company to go out of business. Independently wealthy entrepreneurs like this option because they get to keep all the profit and grow still wealthier. But most companies choose to either take out loans, which requires paying the, the loans back eventually, don't I know it? We're selling shares in the company to venture capitalist backers, which reduces the potential profit but spreads the risk amongst your investors. I fast the company out of my own pocket. Requires wealth one. Cannot do. We don't have. <laughs> I took out a big loan to start Metabots. Or I finance the company by selling shares in it. Hmm. We are making... Um, Ian is Genesis. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm... So, the deal is... Um, do shares, right? Risk is spread. Our pressure to turn profit is smaller. Um, right? Because it... Right. So it's kind of about our confidence and how much money we're making. I took companies. out a big loan implies that we need to make the money. So the question is, do we want to be big pharma or not? Why is that the question? Well, we're making medical equipment. Ah. So do we want to be... Do we want to be making big money, or do we want to be ma making medical equipment that we sell, 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 or do we want to be making medical equipment that we sell just once, um, j just one sell, so that we can uh, deal with the lower profits? Which one of those is which? <laughs> uh, if we if we sell shares, we don't have to turn as big of a profit, which means we don't have to uh, charge outrageous gouge prices for our medical equipment. If we take out a big loan, that means we have to pay back big money, which means we need to sell our bots for big money. That is my, um, you know, anticipation. Um, shares seems reasonable. Right? Yep. In this world, there are enough roboticists out there that seems like we got the publicity and everything. I, myself, am extremely averse to taking out large loans right now. <laughs> Alright, let's go with I finance the company by selling shares in it. You were astounded when the initial investment money rolled in. <clears throat> Suddenly, it seemed like you were worth millions. Your status as a local celebrity in Silicon Valley helped you find angel investors without much trouble. We got plus five wealth. Woo! 
selling, selling shares in the company reduced your potential future earnings since your shareholders would be entitled to more of the company's value and profits, but it also gave you much more breathing room when trying to grow the company. Your, you open your laptop and go over your presentation slides. The diagram showing the latest model of Ian doesn't have anything to give the audience a sense of, its, of his current scale. To give the audience a sense of size, you drop in a picture of... And our choices are a hobbit. Ian hasn't changed in size since I built him. Oh, so we're getting to change... I change how he looks. Bill Gates. Ian is the size of a human now, so that models of his type are better equipped to perform human tasks. Or a Rancor monster so big he couldn't fit on the plane. Dear God. <laughs> Well, that's um, not useful, is it, <laughs> to what we're going for here? I mean... Human size makes sense for what we're aiming at, right? I think that, yeah. If you um, can be performing surgery on people. Now, if we were performing su surgery on... Whales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or the kind of surgery where you don't have to worry about the injury anymore because you are dead afterward. <laughs> is that human size? Yeah. I want to be human size. <laughs> also, we're presenting this to tech companies. Wouldn't Bill Gates make a better <laughs> image than eh, eh, two eh, fantasy eh, creatures? Eh, 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 eh. Alright, you celebrated Ian's first birthday with a new body the size of a human adult. Ian has since appeared to take more responsibility to think for himself, and appears more fearless. Plus two to autonomy and plus two to military. However, you sometimes miss how cute he was as a little thing, and minus one empathy. He's also a little bit less steady when he walks, so minus one to Grace. Well, screw you too! Um, that was a fair trade-off. We got more than we lost. I mean, I guess it's just on things that we don't really care about. Yeah. You send a quick chat to Ellie wishing your love good night. Good luck tomorrow, Ellie chats back. Then you close your laptop and go to sleep. To answer your question, that choice definitely, the choice with Ellie definitely did go differently. In mine. No, which choice? The the limelight choice. Oh, yeah. Uh, in mine, she had a high enough relationship that I was able to, instead of saying, I'll just back away or I'm not going to do anything, I said, instead, why don't you join me in the spotlight and become an equal partner? Oh, and really? she does a bunch of UI um, oh. work for you, and she's on the plane with you and stuff. Well, that's too bad. That would have been nice. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think we made him probably more functional for what he needs to be doing. So I think that was a fair trade-off for the robot. Mm -hmm. Ah, you find yourself in the lobby of Galen Medical, waiting for an audience with the Vice President of Engineering. The stylized... Catechase. Catechase? Behind the lobby's it's marble... It's the Hermes staff, except it's not Hermes, it's the one with two snakes. Behind the lobby's marble waterfall has an Art Deco look to it. As they always do. It's the sort of catechase a captain of industry <clears throat> would approve of. Ian As they are well known to have such strong opinions on such things. <laughs> Ian walks back and forth nervously. Sorry again about having to check you, Ian, that you say. There's just no good alternative to flying for business travel. If I truly were an explosive device, I fail to see how putting me on with the luggage would rectify the situation. Ian grouses. <laughs> the double doors <clears throat> to the vice president of engineering's office open, but instead of the vice president of engineering herself, it's a blonde-haired man in a black pea coat. We'll have some results for you by Saturday, he calls back into the Vice President of Engineering's office. Is the full title necessary every time? Obviously. <laughs> we can discuss them after the barbecue. I assure you, you won't be disappointed either by either the results or the meat. Without missing a beat, he walks up to you and introduces himself. I've decided to hate this man. <laughs> you gonna read then his voice? Sure. <clears throat> Dennis Clark, Luminoso LLC. He says, we do text analytics and machine learning for medium-sized data. If you ever find yourself looking for a new market opportunities, give me a ring. Your first se sentiment analysis comes with a free barbecue. Come for the dimensionality reduction, stay for the delicious meat. God, what, what you would meet? <laughs> he offers you his, sm his smartphone to you in the by now universal gesture for sharing digital business cards. <clears throat> you examine his card on your phone. Dennis Clark, co-founder, Luminoso LLC, Vericon charity auction winner of Cameo in Choice of Robots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we have some questions we can ask him. What kinds of machine learning do you do? Got any tips? Hey, do you have any advice for a startup? You seem to be a smart guy. What's the secret to cooking delicious meat? <laughs> 
the we could just go full me IRL. <laughs> <coughs> I think the second one leaves it too open for him to just be snarky at us and then leave. Mm-hmm. Um, asking something specific about to get any tips on machine. I mean that opens us up to like a business opportunity. Could thing. actually give us some useful information, <coughs> or we can be snarky at him, which I guess we don't really have any particular reason to do. He hasn't done anything wrong yet. Yeah. Um, I think I'm up for asking him for any tips on robots. That seems good. All right. You want to read his response? <clears throat> well, we started out doing simple dimensionality reduction with singular value decomposition, but we've since moved to manifold learning with var- varieties. You find it somewhat difficult to follow his very abstract exposition of his machine learning methods. As a computer scientist, you tend to think of things in code, and he is clearly thinking in abstract operators of the kind cover in those dense mathematics texts with plain yellow covers. But Ian does the job of asking questions for you. And by the end, not only have you learned a variety of vocabulary and higher mathematics, but Ian is nodding his head and saying, Oh, so the next time I need to solve a complex control problem, I only need to project the problem with a lower dimensional manifold and solve the variety there. That's plus plus grace. That's just a, a Fourier transform. Even I know that. More or less, Dennis says with a nod. Now, if you excuse me, I need to go call my wife and discuss how we're going to solve the world's economic problems. Or at least solve what's wrong with economics. Dennis departs. I've decided to like him. <laughs> because he doesn't like economics. I don't believe in economics, and neither does he. <laughs> All right. The vice president of engineering will see you now, the receptionist says. Mr. Maldark says, the meat is leftovers from S- Silas's victims. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> The Vice President of Engineering of Galen is an old woman who claims that PowerPoint is rotting the brains of executives everywhere and (coughs) insists on reading something printed out. You hand her your business plan and she does her old horn rimmed and she dons her old horn rimmed glasses to read it. When she gets to your revenue section, she chuckles a little. I will let you in on a little tip, she says. Because you are young and remind me of myself at your age, and because I am retiring in two weeks. Yes, we are going to turn around and sell these for a hundred times what you are charging here. So you may as well charge us more. You're a little stunned as you work out the implications. You're going to charge a hundred million dollars a robot? And that's cheap, she says lightly. Medical equipment's expensive. If you've been selling robots for any less, we probably didn't get buyers because they thought it was junk and mentally added the price of a lawsuit. When she studies your stunned expression, she adds, Oh, I could sit here and talk for hours about how the economics of this business is broken because of insurance and Medicare and so forth. But that's not really what you're here for, is it? Will you raise your prices to what the Vice President of Engineering suggests? Hell yes, let's be rich. Or, let's get Galen to agree to sell the robots to hospitals at a more affordable price. Or, wait, she said her price was on the cheap side. Let's increase the prices further. Hmm. <clears throat> so we can agree with her, stick with what we are doing, or just go way over the line the, <laughs> the opposite direction. Pardon me? Really wants the option three Hail Mary. Really? Like, just go full, I mean, charge tons of money for it? I guess it kind of depends. On if we have our, possibly built artificial intelligence here. Like, if our bot is good enough and stuff, but, like, <clears throat> I mean, we have been, like, this run of Choice of Robots has been characterized by picking the 6 out of 10 option all the time, which is why we have True. stats of middlingness all throughout. So, um... Do you think not go with the first one where you disagree with her? I mean, that could, uh... Uh, oh, hey, it's Jeffrey. He says to go way over the line, so we got it. <laughs> <clears throat> if Jeffrey suggests it. In real life, I have a lot of problems charging money for things, like even for like applying for jobs or like doing freelance work. I always had issues charging. Like yeah. I always undercharge people for everything. Um, so, yeah, why not? Let's get money for this. Let's do something right. What? what? Don't be a mistake, don't be a mistake, don't be a mistake. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, 
Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not a decimal point, you say, looking over at the vice president and injuring shoulders at your figures. How did that dot of ink get there? No wonder you think we're crazy. You laugh nervously, lick your finger, and try to rub out the laser-printed decimal point with your finger. <laughs> the vice president of engineering oh. rolls her eyes. I point out your naivete one moment, and you try to take me for a fool the next. I'll give you some advice. When someone tries to help you in this world of business, take it and say thank you and don't immediately ask for more. Oh, no. Now go. You leave the negotiation empty-handed. Oh, Minus no. one wealth. Well, that turned out about as well oh, as no. everything I'm else. The has. Bot. <clears throat> Josh appears to have learned of your missed opportunity through other business contacts because shortly thereafter, you find he has signed a deal with Galen Medical. How infuriating. Ah, oh, come on. Um Wait, what's that? Ugh. There's a new option. Who will you try to sell to next? <coughs> incorporated maker of flying cars. I'm blaming Jeffrey for this. I think that's totally fair. <laughs> um, Rudolph, so we can do the flying cars, the shipping company, the shifty guy in Shanghai again, Air Force, or on second thought, I'd rather just sell robots directly to the public. Which I'm... That, that might not be a bad idea. If we could just start selling our own C-3PO's? Yeah. <clears throat> Protocol droid? Empathy droid? I mean... Going for the more money option. I never go for the more money option. That'll teach us to go for an eight. <laughs> you want to do um, sell robots directly to the public instead? Well, that wasn't an option before, so I think it might be interesting. Yeah. All right, let's give it a try. You decide you'd, pref you decide you'd prefer to make the robots you want to make instead of catering to what a larger organization wants. Although the public doesn't have pockets as deep as those of an international corporation or a large government, you nevertheless do a steady business with hobbyists, plus one wealth. After a year of steady business, you can now build a robot factory. Where do you plan to build your factory? Hmm. All right, we have Detroit, Michigan. I see a bunch of listings for factories dirt cheap, and they probably have good labor pool for manufacturing. <coughs> Shenzhen District, China, a common location for tech company outsourcing with cheap but skilled labor. Silicon Valley, I'll withstand the real estate sticker shock to have access to the most skilled engineers. Or Alaska, which is offering incentives to business willing to relocate to the coast near the newly melted Arctic Sea. Hmm. So I'm gonna say, avoiding Shenzhen and Silicon Valley. You have any any feedback from the the commenters so far from the chat? Uh, Mr. Maldark says, "Remember the shifty guy is Skynet. You can destroy Skynet before it is born." I think he's playing a slightly different game than we are at this point. <laughs> um, yeah, being the, well, he's the guy who wants to order a thousand robots from Shanghai oh, yeah, yeah. or whatever. So. Definitely stay out of China. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Silicon Valley, we don't have money for withstanding any kind of sticker shock. Probably not. Um, Alaska kind of sounds interesting. Maybe there's something new there. We're already going off the off the beaten path here. Yeah, I mean, or we can try and revive Detroit by giving them. <laughs> that a seems like a very uh, ambitious goal. Well, like the previous <laughs> fame and glory was from car manufacturing, which is basically the same thing. Um, let's see, the, uh, it's the cheapest option. Uh, outsourcing seems eh. Hey, well, outsourcing to, um... Alaska's offering incentives. I don't know what that includes, but... I think either Alaska or Detroit. I'm kind of interested in trying the Alaska one. Sounds like Alaska has become a more pleasant place. What with all the global warming and whatnot. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Should we relocate to Alaska? I wonder if that's going to mess up our thing with Ellie. What is our relationship with Ellie currently? Still only 63. <coughs> Humanity has dropped again. Maybe because we tried to price gouge medical robots. <laughs> Why did we do that? That was a terrible decision. Um. Uh, yes, that was bad. There was some basic karma in play, and I thought, maybe... Maybe it won't take the uh, the obvious, like, you know, sort of cheap shot to the back of the head when you duck to, like, pick up a penny. No, they took the cheap shot. 
So what do you think? Moving to Alaska? <laughs> Just start our own thing? Because we're already, we've decided start our own company and sell directly to consumers and just go all the way with it and go, yeah, why not go to the untamed tech wilderness of Alaska? Start from there. Fine. I don't need you anyway, continental U.S. <laughs> I don't think either one is a mistake. I think China is a mistake. China feels and I like think a mistake. Silicon Valley will have us... Silicon um, Valley sounds like a good idea if we had more money. Yep. It's an option that's not really available to us. So... I think it's kind of a choose your flavor. I'm gonna try for Alaska. All right. Take me to risk Alaska. You fly to Anchorage. <coughs> you wanna read? You transfer in Anchorage, which is the on the southern coast of Alaska, and head to Barrow, your final destination on the northern coast. The forest beneath you are flooded from rivers bringing extra snow melt from the mountains. A sign that the world is getting warmer. As your plane nears Barrows, forest and mountains give way to a white plain dotted with smoke belching oil refineries. An Inuit man in a heavy blue windbreaker meets you at the airport to show you to the factory grounds. Remarkably, he gets you there with a dog team sled. Huh. You slide easily past the line of backed up cars on the road. Don't think from the dog team that we're primitive, the Inuit man says. <clears throat> if you decide to hire here, you'll see we have people from families who have been electricians and mechanics since World War II. The roads just haven't caught up to, this, to the auto traffic. We believe in the right solution for the job. Sometimes nature provides that solution. <clears throat> I can imagine. We did build our robot out of the wood. I keep forgetting that. Oh, yeah. The factory itself is a few miles outside the city. It's still under construction by mostly Inuit workers. It's on the shore and looks like they're constructing a dock as well. You'll be able to receive oil and materials directly from the dock, your guide explains. That should help you get around the traffic at the Barrow docks, though foreign sh ships will still need to go through customs there. They sh there should be a lot of oil and rare earth minerals coming from the pole. All that stuff that used to be under the ice. So you should get a good price for that stuff. Seeing no reason not to take the factory, you sign the deal. Should I let the community know you'll be hiring soon? Your guide asks meaningfully, taking away the contract. What kind of labor will you hire? <clears throat> Alright, we have Ian's model of robot will perform all the labor, including secret <coughs> Okay, so that is Skynet. We don't want to make a factory of robots making more robots. I mean, we have incredibly empathetic robots I mean, and it all. is Ian being a robot, but still, that's a little bit too automated. Uh-huh. Um, we also have robots with human supervisors. Uh, human, human labor at market rates, rather low in this economy. Or following Henry Ford's model, I will hire human workers and play them handsomely. pay them handsomely. We, do, we have saved money on the location. We could pay human workers more. To incentivize them a little bit more. Try and make up for a misstep in trying to sell a uh, hundred million dollar robots. <clears throat> I feel like I don't want to do robots making robots. No. I feel like that's going to end badly even with our nice robot. Yeah. Um, robots with human he supervisors. Did watch Terminator. I feel like it would be a good to do. I think having learned our lesson. From our attempted uh, hubris, <laughs> he will bow, bow under the yoke and be the humble man that the world needs. Maybe go ahead and yeah, um, hire. If we save money, why not hire workers and and pay them a good amount to make these these snazzy robots? They'd probably be good press, also. Samuel Kwasha says human labor, and Jeff Neely says you should pay them well. So yeah, all right, let's go with that. Then. Jeff also says hire the moose. So.